before we start, is somebody here not familiar with GraphQL? Oh, that's like half of you. Okay. Um, I will tell maybe a little bit about GraphQL. So GraphQL is a query language for, um, for your data collections. It's a little bit different from uh, like collecting data from REST APIs. REST APIs usually have a single endpoint with like fixed data structures. So if you want to get like uh, a collection of your products or your users, you're going to access one uh, REST API endpoint. And in the case of GraphQL, you can uh, combine all those collections into one single endpoint that has uh, flexible data structures. So we're going to look at some GraphQL queries later for the people that aren't familiar with this. Uh, throughout the slides, I will use an example with uh, React. Uh, people are using here React or? Ah, okay, that's better. Okay, so I will use React in most of the in the code examples. So it's always an important thing to add testing to your uh, to your code, especially when you have a JavaScript application without a dynamic uh, with a dynamic type system, not like something like TypeScript. Then it's really important to have uh, testing ske testing scheduled into your uh, development process. So this is a meme about uh, yeah, some guy from Futurama that's wondering if its code is working or just uh, his tests are broken. Like the people in here that are using uh, that are having like a test coverage. Uh, levels inside of the deployment phase will probably know. Uh, you need to have a uh, working test and test above a certain coverage uh, to make sure your code is working uh, or just your tests are really wrong. So who am I? My name is Roy. I, um, I'm from Amsterdam. I work with JavaScript a lot, uh, both uh, professionally at the city of Amsterdam but also uh, at conferences and meetups or workshops I host about uh, React. You can find me on, uh, on Twitter as well. It's um, at get hack team, and then I tweet a lot about JavaScript or React, React Native, and GraphQL as well. Uh, this presentation is about for everyone that's using uh, React applications, JavaScript applications, or maybe GraphQL. I will show both how to test uh, JavaScript applications uh, that use GraphQL and GraphQL queries and mutations out of the box. So if we have a small look at this testing pyramid. Um, this is like the traditional testing pyramid with the unit tests uh, on the bottom, the integration tests uh, in the middle, and end-to-end -end tests in the end. And this also, uh, like in level of complexity, unit tests are fairly easy to create. Integration tests are a bit harder because you're not testing single components or single pieces of code, but how code connects with each other. And end-to-end -end test is usually the most difficult one, as you would usually mock a browser or I uh, use something like Cypress to do it and really see how a user will interact with your application from page to page. And so this will focus mostly on unit tests because it's a bit hard to explain integration and end-to-end -end tests in one, uh, one single presentation. Um, before, to have some criticals, before we have some criticals, there's uh, a new approach for testing is usually something like this. Um, it's like a, a upside down diamond or a, what is it? a five-point uh, polygon. And as you can see, unit tests are on the bottom, integration tests are in the middle, end-to-end -end tests are on top, uh, making end-to-end -end tests and integration tests uh, much more important. Uh, but like I said, we will focus on unit tests for now. And maybe if we have time for questions, we can discuss uh, how to do an integration test as well. So why should you write a test? Uh, like I said before, tests are important to see if your code is uh, stable, and usually it's an indication if your code is working as well. Um, so you will test if your code uh, will work as expected. So usually when you have a project with a good, uh, with good test inside, you can see all the functions from the project by just looking at the descriptions of the tests. And you will also see if you can handle errors and edge cases correctly. And this, all, this is also something I will show in an example. And you will also test if your syntax is handled correctly, especially with JavaScript, as we have a dynamic type system, unless you use TypeScript or maybe Flow if you're using React. Uh, you're not always sure if a variable you're passing always is an integer or a float or a boolean. It could be the case that your integer uh, is instead a float or you're expecting a string and sending an object. So usually if you have unit tests in place, uh, you will notice when you're testing that your code uh, isn't working as predicted because one of your variables has a different syntax. 
Uh, for testing JavaScript, there are a lot of uh, frameworks or applications that are available already. I will mention some and uh, maybe some people will uh, recognize them. Uh, at first we have Mocha, which is a JavaScript test framework. Um, people use it a lot when they are running Node.js applications or want to test something right in the browser. We also have uh, Enzyme, uh, which is a JavaScript testing utility, uh, usually for React, and it simulates the React DOM and React components. And this is a much more advanced version of the code that we're using. I'll be using the React test utils when they were in the examples, and Enzyme is a more advanced uh, version of that one. Uh, you also have Chai, which is an assertion library, so if you expect stuff to be equal to each other or not equal, or you want to uh, know if one of your actions has been called or if an API has been called, then you can use Chai assumptions for that. And in the end, we have Jest, which is sort of into the box with uh, React, and it was created by Facebook, and the examples I will show are using Jest. Uh, you also have stuff, like I mentioned before, like Cypress, and Cypress uh, it runs in the browser and it, is, uh, it mocks the browser behavior with Puppeteer and then you can see how people click to your application. Uh, that is far beyond the uh, unit testing we will discuss today. Uh, but it might be good to know if you uh, want to integrate testing in your project. So we're going to look at an example that uses GraphQL. And I'm going to show the schema first. So we have a schema with a product, a review and an offer. And as you can see the review and offer are dependence of product. And for people that aren't familiar with GraphQL, this schema is the basis of your application, and we're going to define each type like we would define our uh, database scheme in example. So all our variables uh, will have this format, all our IDs will always be integers, our titles will always be strings, and so forth. And the review and offer types are also described and linked to the product type. So uh, throughout the entire application, we will have a real clear uh, ID and what structure our data will be, so we don't really have to test anymore if our uh, thumbnail really is a string or it actually could be like an object. And on the right you see two other types I've defined in the schema. One is query. Uh, we're going to query two things, like the products uh, all together and a product separately. And we also have a mutation where we will add an offer to a product. So this is if you do, for example, like an Amazon sort of application where we have products, and products are offered by multiple people. So I'm going to see if I can switch it up. Yes, yeah, so here we will have the code for our project. And also Yeah, so the application we're going to test is uh, this one. So we have an offer, that's, uh, we have a product, it's, uh, in this case a blue t-shirt, and it's offered by three companies, and we can add offers to this one. So if we want to add a reseller uh, with a price, and we can add it like this, and we see the, um, uh, the re new reseller is added with a price, and this all works through our GraphQL schema that we have described here. So this is the entry point of our application and the page you just saw was the products page showing an overview of the products we have and below you can see there's a form component right here uh, that lets us add the offer to the, to the product and the form component is right here. Yes, so like I said before, we have uh, a query where we get all the products. So the overview we just saw of all the, the products with the forms, uh, we could retrieve it by querying all the products. And the mutation, so adding another offer to the form, uh, was done by this GraphQL mutation. If we want to test this component, then there are, uh, there are multiple options. Like I said before, we can, you have the integration test, the unit test, or the end-to-end -end test. And we're going to see how the end-to-end -end test will work. Um, testing GraphQL is a little bit different than just testing uh, React components. 
So as you could see, if we just want to test the product compo the product component, then we would have done it something like this. We use the React test renderer uh, to see if the component renders. Um, however, this would give you an error as we are missing um, the whole Re GraphQL setup. So we somehow we have to include the GraphQL setup, as you can see here. Yeah, so in our index file, we have uh, Apollo provider, and Apollo uh, lets you add GraphQL to your uh, project. And we have a Apollo client set up, which is our GraphQL server. And we're also, we wrapped our products component inside this Apollo provider with Apollo client attached to it. So when we're testing the products component, we will also need to include that GraphQL uh, Apollo provider component, otherwise our test would fail, obviously. So that is something we we can also mock it entirely. So I have a small example where you can see that we're adding our Apollo client in our test file as well, although this isn't really maintainable. Um, and also because we're directly including Apollo client inside our test files, we will also test against uh, real life data. So if a server is not running or you don't have a network connection, then your test will automatically fail because you can't uh, check your schemas and your queries against the real data from the server. So this is something we also can't test uh, with this behavior. So that's why Apollo has created the, the mock provider. It's especially for React components and it lets you, um, lets you add your schema and your mock queries and mutations uh, directly to the components so you can use them. And this way you can, um, you can test against mock data. As you can see, we insert the mock data to see if our project is working fine. And you can see our products component is wrapped inside uh, the mock provider, which is basically the mock version of the Apollo provider uh, we saw before. And that way we will test against the mock data. So if you have your GraphQL query and you want to return the products, then we don't need the real data, but you can just insert data in the mocks. And it will also have the same JSON format as your real data, but then with, uh, with mocked values. Another thing we can do is test schemas, but I will show you the uh, mock files for the uh, components first. Yes, bigger. Right. Yeah, so at first we can test our, um, our query against the, uh, against the component. As you can see, this is our uh, actual component file and we have our GraphQL query defined here. And we're going to query all the products with the variables and also their related collections, which are uh, reviews and offers. And as you can see, we do nothing more than just mapping out the data we get back from uh, GraphQL. And we get this data back from this query component from Apollo. And we will just map it out here. And as you can see, we have the title and the offers, and the offers all have uh, their own variables, and we also have the form component. If you look at the testing for the products component, uh, you, can see if, you can see instantly from how we described our tests uh, what the uh, component should do. So the component should render without an error. That's something we can test really easy. We don't need to add any mock data because we don't need the mock data at first because the component doesn't need any data to render. And as you can see, we wrapped it inside the test renderer from React. Uh, we have a mock provider and our products component, and this test should work. We also have a test where we would test the loading state. We're going to see if our uh, component actually shows a loading indicator or a loading text when we're retrieving data from GraphQL. For this, we still don't need to mock any data um, because this is just testing the connection with the, pro uh, with the provider. And for the third one, we need to actually insert any mocks. So as you can see, we mock the entire GraphQL request uh, by adding the query. And the query is the same one we use in the actual component, and we just import it. And we're going to check if the result data matches our schema and matches our query, something that we have defined on the front end. And this is a test that also should work, and we're going to test it by seeing if there actually is a product that has the name test that matches with the name test in our result. And last but not least, we can also test for an error message. And as you can see from the running example, you 
We just tested here and see if our tests are working. As you can see, the, um, all the tests from the products component passed. And we also test the form component, which is basically tested on the same way as we tested our products component. As you can see, we have described uh, the mutation in the form. And as you can see, it's a mutation with variables that uh, we send to our GraphQL server and which returns data if we edit our uh, product successfully. And as you can see, use the form submit uh, that uses the React uh, create ref uh, feature. Um, which we can also test by mocking, uh, by mocking those uh, refs. As you can see, I mock those refs right here inside the testing of our uh, form component. And we do it basically the same way. So we wrapped our form component inside the mock provider component from Apollo uh, to test if it's working. We do the same for the loading state. We're gonna see if our um, component shows a loading indicator when we're um, sending the mutation to the GraphQL server. And last but not least, we're going to check if we get a success message after our product or offer is added to the product. And this is how you can test components. And if it all went too fast, it's on GitHub as well. I'll show you a link later. Something else we can do with GraphQL is testing our schemas directly. So if you're familiar with uh, Redux, for example, you can test Redux uh, action creators directly and see if they mutate your reducer uh, correctly. And schemas we can test with a small open source framework uh, package that is called uh, Easy GraphQL Tester. And with Easy GraphQL Tester, we can directly test our GraphQL queries and mutations against the GraphQL server. As you can see, it's a small example of how we should do that. So you're just going to impair the Easy GraphQL Tester, and you can uh, define your schema. So you either have to need to have your schema on the front end to test on the front end, or use Easy GraphQL Tester directly on your GraphQL server. And you're just gonna input uh, the schema in there and then you can test if your query will work. So in this last assumption. And you can te you test directly to the schema. Um, so this will mean you get the real uh, situation because in this case, I'm importing the schema from my backend GraphQL server. So I will always need to have the server live. And you can also test with invalid values. So in this case, we're gonna test if or mutation should return a success message or an error message. So, for example, if I would insert uh, a wrongfully variable, I would insert a in float to my integer, then I should have to know that my test case should fail because um, the format of the variable isn't the correct one. And you can do the same for uh, mutation, for, yeah, to test if it returns. Uh, you can also use mock schemas. So instead of your real schemas, you can mock them to see if your, uh, the queries you've defined are really working. And you can test both stuff. So in this case, we will test if our products, yeah, if our products query will return products in the form of an array, and we're gonna test that to be true. And so if you're interested to see more about this, uh, this project, you can find it on my, uh, on my GitHub here. And you will need the actual Apollo uh, GraphQL server running, but the link to that one is also in the index file, I believe. So you can test, go and start the GraphQL and start testing it in your browser. Yes, yeah, so if we look at the code example again, then you can see I've added the schema testing. I've added the schema testing into a different directory because we're testing, uh, we're not really testing the components, we're just gonna test if our queries work. So in the uh, component file, so this is the form component, and we're gonna test if our actual component will render with the mock data. And inside the other file, I'm gonna test the schemas. So that's inside this file. Uh, at first, I retrieved the schema from my GraphQL server, which is hosted on Code Sandbox. So if you would find the project on GitHub and go to this, this link, you will find actual uh, Apollo GraphQL server I'm using. And so I'm importing the schema and I'm testing against the real life data in this file where I'm, uh, yes, where I'm import the schema right here. I import my queries from the components and I'm testing against the real data to see if it works. So my third test will see if my query matches um, everything that I have defined in my schema, which is basically the core of GraphQL. If your queries don't match the schema, you won't get any results. So that's something we need to test at first. 
secondly, I will return if the corrected data uh, is in the right format. So product should be an array and we can test if it really should be an array by having these uh, chai assumptions. We want to know if the result actually is a result we are expecting. And in the last one, I'm testing the actual uh, mutation. So I describe your test mutations in the form component. At first, I'm going to test if my mutation would actually return me um, the offer I just uh, inserted. And we're going to see if that violation is true. We import our uh, mutation and we test it. And we're going to see if it returns this data. And that's the case is we just saw the test works. And in the final version, I'm going to see if our mutation would fail if we insert something other for product ID. So you can see we've defined product ID. It's defined in our schema as a uh, as an integer, and we've defined it here as a string. So this should fail, obviously. Yes. Yeah, so again, you can find more information on this uh, GitHub repository to actually have this product running. And if you want to know more about this, you can also go to Twitter and just ask me a question if you would like. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. So if you have a question, raise your hand. I mean, you have a question, but who is the first who is going to ask it? <laughs> huh? Just want to look at me looking strange. <laughs> Maybe they understood everything. Right. No? No questions? Well, if you're a little bit shy, uh, maybe you'll be outside of the room. Yeah, I will be uh, outside the room, and you can just go to Twitter. My handle is uh, right there on the bottom, and you can uh, send me a message or just send me a tweet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.